Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. Today is a very sad day. Today it became official, although sources, other sources, have said that we passed a sad milestone of over 200,000 people who have died from COVID-19 more than a week ago. But today, it's official. Now, 200,000 people is the size of the population of some American cities, such as Little Rock, Arkansas, Tallahassee, Florida, Yonkers, New York. That's a lot of people. Now, the mortality of COVID-19 has already surpassed the total number of annual preventable accidental deaths. Now that includes from causes such as motor vehicle accidents, falls and overdoses. In 2018, the year that the most recent data is available in the United States, and it's only September. At this pace, experts say COVID-19 will likely be the third leading cause of death in the United States in 2020, behind only heart disease and cancer. Now we know how to end preventable accidental deaths, such as motor vehicle accidents. That's by wearing a seatbelt, reducing your speed, uh, and you know, not drinking and driving. Falls are largely preventable. Overdoses are largely preventable. And I say to you, we can do better at preventing these deaths from COVID-19 by exercising better human behavior. Now, this past week, we've had 27 of the 50 mainland U.S. states reporting big increases in COVID-19 cases, and we know first the cases, and then two to four weeks later, the numbers of people who succumb to this disease will follow. I heard an expression, I read this actually, by uh, the words of Dr. William Hanage, who's an epidemiologist at the Harvard School of Public Health. He said, and I quote, we must remember as far as this virus is concerned, that every single person that it comes into contact with is a good piece of meat. That's what we are. We're pieces of meat to this virus. And most of the world is still susceptible. Now I say today that we cannot hang our hopes on the promise of a vaccine. It's just too early to know if the vaccine is really going to work. And we can only look to the HIV virus as an example. The HIV virus has mutated so much in the past 40 years that it has eluded every vaccine that has been developed against it. Now, I'm the first one to say we have to keep hope alive. But in the meantime, folks, we gotta have some common sense I heard an expression that I want to share with you all. Leadership is the stewardship of lives that are entrusted to you. Now, parents, teachers, pastors, community leaders, friends, grandparents, public health officials, city leaders, county leaders, we have got to have better leadership. We have to have leadership at a personal level because that's the only thing that we really can control. You can't legislate behavior. You can try, but people don't always do it. So we've got to be personally responsible and we have to demonstrate personal leadership in a time such as this. So we all need to remember that our own behavior can help save our lives and the lives of others. And believe it or not, we can influence others to do the right thing.
I'm not going to say that it's easy. I'm not going to say that you won't be teased or ridiculed for demonstrating uh, behavior to protect you against this virus. Now, yesterday I did uh, taping on the possibility that this virus is airborne. Okay, let's just assume that it's airborne. The aerosol scientists, these folks that know about this stuff, these engineers, they have been saying that it is, which means that we have to wear the mask. Simply put, it means that mask wearing is your protection against airborne viruses. So we have three weapons, masking, staying away six feet or more from other people who are outside our immediate household and washing our hands. Now, again, I know that we don't always see this behavior modeled by our leaders and we all have to discern what is responsible behavior and what is irresponsible behavior and we have to make a choice. In the end, you have to know what you want to be about. What do you want to live for? Because COVID-19 is a matter of life and death for many people who contract this virus. We're seeing children who are ending up orphans because they've lost their parents from this disease. Ask yourself, What's important to you? What do you need to start doing or what do you need to stop doing? If you're feeling lonely and many people are tired of this social isolation, then ask yourself, how do you stay socially connected as this pandemic drags on? Develop a plan. And if you can, have a buddy system for the remainder of this pandemic have multiple buddies, help get a plan together that helps you survive. Get your personal survival plan and stick to it. So that's what I'm talking about today. Now, again, it's going to require a lot of changes. If you're planning a big party, a big birthday party, skip a year. So you can try to have a birthday party when this pandemic is over. If this is the year that you are going to have a big sit down family reunion, Thanksgiving dinner, please rethink that plan. Right now, the virus has not shown one bit of sign of slowing down. We never got out of the first wave. Some countries are experiencing the second wave we're still in the first wave. We don't have a cure. Yes, we do have better treatments and many people are surviving, but many people are also surviving with a lot of lifelong debilitating conditions. So as we today mourn this official death toll of 200,000 people, more than the size of three Heinz Field Stadium filled with people. Let's all recommit ourselves to leadership. Let's all be leaders. And let's remember that leadership is the stewardship of lives entrusted to you. This is Dr. Rhonda Johnson. My views are my own. Stay safe. Stay connected. Keep your guard up and have always a blessed day.